Welcome to this week's edition of South Coast Sport, which takes us to Southampton, the home of Trojans Hockey Club. We'll be looking at the sport's increase in popularity due to current facility improvements down at the club and speaking to some of the staff and players as well. Then we head to look at some skiing in the local area at Southampton Alpine Club, where the facilities and conditions are not quite as good. And finally, in our weekly university section, we look at Solent men's football team and speak to their manager, Dominic Cunliffe. The Trojans are Southampton's premier hockey club and after being formed in 1961, have gone on to have over 10 different teams competing at a variety of levels, as well as having produced England internationals, both male and female. The club are currently in the process of upgrading their facilities at a cost of £300,000, with 175,000 of that total being funded by Sports England. Club joint chairman Simon Gibbons is happy with the recent developments, but says the club are not finished yet. We noticed we'd had some success, we were acquiring more members, but again, we've noticed over 20, 30 years that if you want to grow something and increase the standard at the facility, you need to have the best facilities available. Uh, we looked we spent about three or four months going looking at different pictures around the country. In the end, we decided to go with a partnership from a, uh, the actual uh, carpet producer this time uh, is Dutch, and they're putting in the pictures for the World Championships, which are going on in The Hague, which start in May. I mean, we've actually had come up with a plan of the next few stages. You'll see a stand out there, which we want to get and get it covered, because, of course, a lot of people end up helping uh, our parents or other teams or other coaches and they end up watching and as you know in the last two or three months it does rain occasionally so we're trying to get a big covered stand out there to try and not drown the people that end up helping us the most. With a new pitch already in place and improvements to the stands and camera platforms on their way, ladies first team coach Chris Gittens believes that his side can now aim to progress further themselves due to the quality upgrades. It's fantastic, absolutely brilliant. The, uh, the surface, the playing surface in particular, has made a massive difference. Uh, the old pitch, there are a lot of the modern skills we really struggled to coach um, and since this has been redeveloped, it's made a huge difference. We would hope it's going to help us to continue to develop. We're, um, we've got a bit of a long-term plan at the moment. We'd like to get back to playing Premiership hockey. Um, it is a long-term goal, it's not going to happen overnight, but having having this pitch to play on and the stand on its way and camera platform and everything like that uh, will play a big part in that I'm sure. And the players themselves are happy with the work done at Trojans and believe the improved facilities alongside the achievements of the Team GB hockey teams are increasing the sport's popularity. Um, it's a lot better like the pitch is far nicer to play on it's not so sandy. Quite a lot of motivation I guess. Um, more will to strive forward to achieve. Trojans is a really good standard of hockey national league. So I think it's growing in publicity, so it's getting bigger and bigger as the GB team win more and more. Well, I visited uh, the club last year when it was a different pitch. And it was a lot sandier. It really hurt when you fell over. So this is a lot better. It's obviously a lot better for spectators, and it will probably bring a bigger crowd because the weather's like this. No one likes to turn up. So obviously, if there's you know, shelter, people will come. I definitely think it's, it's getting better. Like, there's more people getting involved, which is good. Um, there's definitely more involvement, especially because we had Alex Danson, who used to play here, who's a great Britain hockey player. So she's obviously promoted it a lot down south, so it's good. Not only have the improved facilities been of benefit to Trojans, but the recent success of hockey at the Olympics means the future of the sport is looking bright. Up here at the club, massive impact. Uh, we've added a, an extra ladies team, so we've got, now got a ladies fourth team. Um, most of the players are players that are returning to the sport after having not played for a long time or players that are getting into it for the first time. Um, so it's had a huge impact, the success of the games in general and the success of the ladies hockey team. Um, we've seen a large number of people come and join the club um, and you know, we hope we can just continue to develop and grow off the back of it. I think they've got a lot more people into the sport for the first time or back into the sport. Uh, I, I would hope that, well I certainly hope we have a facility on its way, mm -hmm. a, a home for English and, and for Great Britain hockey, which would be great. 
Uh, we've benefited from a couple of Sport England programmes, obviously you see the facility around you. Um, so I think facilities as well as numbers back into the game has been a, a real plus point. Contrast this, however, to the facilities and conditions for the young skiers down at Southampton Alpine Club. The centre is one of only two dry ski slopes in the Hampshire area, with the closest real snow slope centre situated over two hours away in Hertfordshire. We were down there on a wet and miserable day where the club's chief of races believes that although the facilities are not great, travel and cost problems mean that budding local skiers do not have many alternatives. There aren't that many slopes around. I mean, for us down here, Southampton is the closest slope and it's, it's, it's a plastic slope, so it's not as much fun as skiing on the snow. And the snow domes, the closest one is over two hours away and the cost is really expensive. So um, I think it's a big cost factor. There aren't as many snow domes around. The plastic slopes are great and it does make the racing affordable, but it, it, it's, it's lacking. There are, there are not enough around. And although poor conditions and facilities mean that skiing is never likely to become a main sport in this country, the young skiers at Southampton Alpine Club have their own ideas on how the sport's popularity can be increased. Probably just get like more young people into it, because like, I think a lot of people joining at the moment are, are quite old, like my age. I think that they should get out more snow domes and um, slopes and encourage more younger children to um, race um, on dry slopes because it is very fun. Just, yeah, it needs a bit more publicity. Like the Winter Olympics that we've just had has done it quite well. I mean, I mean, more people get into it, but it needs to be cost effective and that sort of thing as well. But it generally is, but there's not many people, places, I mean, that you can uh, get into it. Funding, definitely. I think the funding from the governing bodies, because it's not a main sport in England, then there isn't there and you need that to progress to the top level. I think that's the main factor, really. With Team GB surpassing their three medal targets set by UK Sport for the recent Winter Olympics, including a bronze in the snowboard slope style, perhaps more funding for winter sports is not far away. But until then, Eager skiers in the Southampton area will have to continue to brave facilities and conditions like these. This week's university section takes us to Southampton Solent's football team, who play at the impressive Test Park, which was officially opened by Southampton legend Matt Letissier in May 2012 and is now home to more than just the Solent football teams. Men's football manager Dominic Cunliffe is more than happy with the multi-purpose sports facility and believes in time it will continue to grow. I mean, if you look at this facility here at Test Park, you know, it, it's, well, as the Premier League, I've said to us, it's, it's world class. You know, there are not many universities we know of that have got these facilities. You know, a three and a half million pound facility here at Test Park. You know, we're encouraged now because not just football and American football, the ladies football if you like as well as men but also rugby now down, down here as well so I think this this park will, will develop it will grow uh, but again we've got to be cautious we've got to set the foundations first there's no point just throwing money at it and see what we can do we've got to be sustainable so we need to make sure we're measured and we progress slowly but also in the right direction as a whole football has performed well for Southampton Solent University rising eight places in the Bucks rankings from last season as the university fell in the rankings for a third consecutive year. Cunliffe is happy with the football side of things, but is aware more must be done if Solent wants to score better in the Bucks rankings overall. I, I can say it quite smugly that football's gone up. Um, we, we've increased our points uh, tally year on year for the last three years. So in that respect, you know, the, the football is holding its own. I'm not just men's football, but also the ladies' football as well. The ladies' football have been promoted for the last couple of years and done well in the cup competitions like the men. So in that respect, football from the university perspective it, is holding its own. You also have to remember that we're a relatively small university compared to others. We have a relatively small number of teams. We could quite easily cater mentioned earlier on the number of trialists that come down we could have five or six men's football teams and they could get points each each year but we're looking at quality not the quantity and you know if, if the university decide that they're going to say right we want to go up the bucks table 
um, then they're going to have to put them hand in the pocket. So actually, we're going to have to cater for five football teams, men and ladies, as well as you know five rugby teams, five everything else like that. So it's 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 all about being cautious, spending the money wisely. But I do know that a lot of the support staff are working tirelessly hard to, to make sure that we go up their rankings. And Solent men's finished in a respectable third position in Division 2A this season, meaning Solent football at least will likely rise again in the Bucks table. That's all we have time for this week, but join us again next time on South Coast Sport.